So for the folks who are going to see this, a uh, little background, my name is Eugene Beckles. Uh, Kristen Smith and I run Smith & Company Real Estate, which is brokered by Kale. So we're investors, we're also um, real estate brokers who work with investors. And when we work with investors, we have a uh, fairly good network of contractors, real estate brokers that we also work with. We also work with lenders. And today we've got a lender that we're going to be talking to, uh, Lewis Jeffries. And um, the reason I wanted to talk to Lewis is because Lewis helped uh, save a deal that uh, was closed on in December. Lewis is a mortgage broker, and I'll let Lewis give a little bit of background about himself. Thanks for inviting me, Eugene. I'm uh, Lewis Jeffries, FBC Funding. Short background, I've been in the business since 1990 uh, as a lender, um, a mortgage banker, working for banks. And when the market crashed in 2008, 2010, uh, went out on my own, started FBC Funding, uh, actually with my son, and we have been going strong ever since. And our focus is on uh, real estate investors, strictly on real estate investors. So we do residential and commercial mortgages uh, in the real estate background. We have, uh, we are a correspondent lender, which means we're a banker. We use sometimes our own money and sometimes other folks' money, as well as a broker where we use strictly what the uh, companies that we broker with have for available for us. We have over 40 lenders that we work with. So we've got lots of programs and we lend nationally. One last thing, we have a pool of private investors in addition to our institutional funding as well. So you mentioned broker, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk. So some of the folks we work with are, are newbies. Some of them are very experienced. But for the, for the newbies, can you kind of explain the difference between working with a mortgage broker versus going direct to a bank? First of all, banks don't do what we do. <laughs> okay, that's the, the first thing. Uh, uh, banks generally don't lend to investors who are developing unless they have a lot of money and uh, they have a relationship with them and they're based and they're lending based off of just a, a financial relationship with them and in the, the the funds that they have conventional lenders don't lend what we do like we do as real estate investors and, and as a broker what we offer are multiple products that um, even if a, a lender a direct lender who has a product they only have limited options so we have multiple options available to us in multiple programs when we're talking about first-time investors generally first-time investors are left off the list in terms of what they can do so i mentioned the bank in my question but there's hard money lenders, like one of the biggest in uh, Chicago land is, is Renovo. Mm -hmm. So what would be the difference between what you do and what a hard money lender like Renovo does? Uh, Renovo is a good lender. They, they have a niche. They fill their niche. And um, as, as a probably the premier, well, I won't say premier, but they've been around longest in Chicago and they've got Chicago money directly back in them. But one of the things they do is that their terms are not as good as our terms in the sense that uh, they require a larger down payment and uh, they um, their underwriting is a little different. Therefore, for first time investors, we can do some things that um, that they won't do, not that they can't do, that they won't do. They, they want to see a, a longer track record and uh, we just have more options. It, it's, in a nutshell, we just have more options. If you approve with a company like Renovo and you're doing a deal, they're not actually shopping their deal. No. You're with Renovo. Right. Okay, as opposed to you, uh, you 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 have the ability to put you with a lender, but actually shop the deal as required. Yeah, um, and, and I don't shop deals either. Uh, yeah. I I have forty lenders. I know the program that fits here, the program that fits there. So we have multiple programs. So when, when we say shop the deal, in a sense, we we're looking for the best option for you, but we're looking for the best options out of multiple programs that we already have available. I'm not going to take a borrower and say, I think I can do this and go shop around and try to find somebody. We already know what we can do and, uh, you know, the advantages and disadvantages of this program over that program. So you're shopping with the, within your pool of lenders first. Exactly. And then you got your private lenders as well. What's the difference between your pool of lenders and your, your private lenders? The institutional lenders are, are the hedge funds and the um, other companies that put their money together and they're lending. They're, they're no different than any other bank in the sense they've got their guidelines. Uh, our private funders are private individuals who have money who will um, invest independently in a loan that um, says that I'm an independent investor. So they don't have guidelines. They depend on us to say, 
this is a good deal or not a good deal. And if it meets their return requirements, there they will invest in the pro in the in the project. Can you give us an idea whether you, uh, whether it's the first time an investor or even an experienced investor in general, what kind of uh, terms you provide? I know you can't be specific. I know every deal is kind of different, but what what are the general terms regarding uh, that you're looking for? And also, what kind of deals really qualify? For your, for your type of programs? I'll talk about three programs in specific, and then we can talk about variations. The first program is we offer 100% financing product, 100% of the purchase, 100% of the rehab, and uh, you come to the table with closing costs. You have to have reserves. We're not looking for borrowers in the 100% program who have no money. We're looking for borrowers who have money and choose not to use their money. 100% program is a full dot. So we will look at income assets and, and credit and determine based off the income assets and credit. Minimum credit score 660. Um, assets, be able to pay at least 12 months of the mortgage payment um, and closing costs. So you, you had to have assets, you had to have credit. We, we're not debt ratios limited. So if a person who has a lot of money and, and no income, they qualify just as a person who has a little money and great income. We just wanna make sure that they're able to uh, handle the debt during the period of time of the loan. That's the 100% financing. First time investors will get 60% of the ARV. Uh, experienced investors will get 65% of the ARV. And, uh, and the terms get better in terms of the cost, uh, the more deals that you've done under the 100% program. Next program, I call it the 90% program. We'll, we'll lend up to 90% of the purchase price and 100% of the rehab for investors who've had at least three deals completed. So in three deals could either be three deals where they bought and rehabbed and sold, or they own three properties as rental properties right now, or a combination thereof. So if they've had at least three deals uh, experience, then we will fund 90% of the project cost, 90% of the purchase price, 100% of the rehab, up to 75% of the after rehab value. Uh, rates are pretty good in that program. Uh, rates are as low as 8% in that program, depending again on your experience and your credit. For the first time investor, they're putting down 20% versus 10%. Uh, on on the project, uh, but again, as they as they grow, then their terms get better. That's the second option. The third option um, requires the investor uh, to put down 15% of the entire project. One of the terms in the industry is called loan the cost. Loan the cost is is the entire project. So so if the purchase price is fifty thousand, the rehab is fifty thousand. It's a hundred thousand dollar project. Fifteen percent of the entire project is fifteen thousand dollars would be your down payment. In all these projects, seventy. Five thousand is the minimum loan amount. Just um, to let you know, in a fifteen percent project, the one thing that's unique about that project is the borrower will bring three months of payments to closing, and we'll finance the uh, another nine months. So they'll have twelve months of payments in escrow, so they don't make a payment during the term of the uh, contract. Do you have to have an LLC? I know uh, many lenders require they will, they can only lend to LLCs. Yes, uh, you know there are some exceptions. Typically, they require. A lower loan to value and it's generally not worth it. It's, it's it's for your protection and it's also from a from a lender point of view there's certain guidelines that says we cannot do certain things to um, individuals so it's better to lend to a business than for them to assume that this is a business transaction. But you're still personally liable even though the lending is to the LLC. Not always. Not always. <laughs> okay. We, we, we do have non-recourse options. Okay. So so for an experienced investor, we can offer a non-recourse option for, um, uh, and the non-recourse options means that uh, the loan is to the, to the entity, the borrower is not personally liable unless they did something illegal or wrong in the process, but the, in the normal course of the deal, they wouldn't be liable. And uh, generally they require a larger down payment. Um, non-recourse loans are primarily done uh, well, they're, they're done for people who are using um, IRA money, right. uh, self-directed IRA money, as well as for investors who are uh, larger and, and more experienced and they do a lot of business and they're, they're a company and they have multiple partners and they they want to maintain that uh, separation. We do have uh, non-recourse money. And we have a lot of foreign investors, probably about three to four a year, we get calls and start working with. Uh, do you lend to uh, foreign investors? We, we we lend to foreign nationals. Foreign nationals are a little tougher because in, in the real estate investing, if you walk away from the deal, you walk away from the deal. And if, if they have no roots here, it's easy to walk away from a deal. Typically, you're not going to walk away from a deal that you put money into. 
So uh, for foreign nationals, we require a larger down payment, but we will do foreign investors. And we do fix and flip funding and we do long-term rental funding for both foreign investors and all investors. So speaking of foreign investors, that brings me to our, our, our story and how you and I kind of a mutual, mutual customer. Yes. I won't mention the customer's name, but you know who it is. Sure. Uh, we uh, had a deal uh, that was, uh, it wasn't unusual to me um, and things always come up in, in deals but uh, sort of at the last minute uh, underwriting had a had an issue with the deal and what I loved about the deal was the fact that the team was working hard to help pull this together and you were part of that now we ended up closing with the original person but can you explain to the audience uh, what happened during that deal and what you did as a backup plan to help make it work? Just, just the overview of the deal. The deal was a really good deal. The numbers worked well and it was a project that um, I, I told him, I'm sure you, you advised him the same way, that this is a great deal. You shouldn't pass on this opportunity. And um, in part of the, in part of the project was, or part of the problem was the property was um, in demolition court, which means that um, at, at any point in time, the city could have came down and tore down the property because it, it had a demolition order against it. Now we fund those deals. And, and the, the, the interesting thing is we vetted the program. We vetted everything prior to taking the offer and submitting the deal. And everybody was in agreement, uh, got our pre-approval and approval uh, based on it. We got the final underwriting and they said no. And, and I know why they said no, because of COVID. And, and in COVID, the, um, there's just been more delinquency than before. So things that they did prior to COVID are things that they have an issue with now. Right. That they never had an issue with before. Since you don't have a lot of deals in demolition court, they did not create a rule saying that that's no longer an issue. And so we get to uh, ready to close everything, submitted, ready to close, and they had an issue with it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> During the process, as we're going back and forth, uh, every a, a, as you mentioned, Eugene, everybody's working together. Well, what about this? What about this? What about this? During that issue, uh, we said, well, uh, the seller had a, a drop dead deadline that the deal had to close this year. And uh, I let the buyer know that I did have a private funder that would fund the deal if they were to be interested uh, in, in, in using that as a backup. Of course, the private funding are typically more expensive. So that was that's always a backup offer. That's never the primary offer. And uh, they were interested in doing that. We had the private funding in place and there are people who could write a check in a day. So it's not an issue with um, timing. I had all the paperwork that I had uh, to submit to original lenders. So they saw the appraisal. They saw the scope of work. They felt comfortable with the contractor and uh, knowing that if the you know, if the borrower didn't pay, they had a good property. So they were gladly lend on the, the project. And so they just, we just had money ready just in case the lender did not uh, come through. And as you mentioned, they did uh, at the last minute, they agreed to fund the deal. You know, I, I, I've had that happen to me before with a, uh, a lender that I, I will not mention. Literally at the closing table, they did not show up. And uh, we delayed closing for 24 hours and we closed in cash. But I will tell you, I was very angry that that lender didn't show up. So they just didn't show up. <laughs> yeah. So when this was happening three days before closing, it was great to see that you came to the table with a backup plan in the event that this lender did not show up, especially since we've been working with this, je this gentleman for a year to try to find him his deal. And we I think we found a good one, you know, 240 ARV, purchased it for 100K, renovation about 40K. That's a good deal. That's a really good deal. <laughs> That's a really good deal. Uh, even when you consider, you know, the the the, the cost and all of that uh, for the for, for lending, it's like this is a good deal. We got We have whatever we can do to stay in this deal. Let's let's stay in this deal. And uh, so even though we ended up closing with the original lender, I thought what you did to uh, have that back up in place was fantastic. That's why I wanted to do this video and introduce you to the uh, you know the other people that work with us so they, they know there's a, uh, another lender out there. Our deal is to have multiple resources in place for our clients and uh, we just wanted to add you to the list. Exactly. Uh, Let me add something else. Um, um, I, I have, some of my private investors are also interested in, in doing joint venture deals. Okay. So, so if you got, uh, especially Especially they love contractors, people who are experienced in, in the property. They just don't have money to do the deal. They will joint venture on the deal. So uh, that's something else that they love to do as well. So what I want to do is give you an opportunity here. What is your uh, contact information? Folks can contact you. First, the website is rehablender.net. 
rehablender.net is the website. And our email is uh, lewisj at FBC Funding. Lewis, L-O-U-I-S, J at FBC Funding. Dot com And the number is 312-741-3656. Thank you, sir. Stay Thank warm. You. You, you do the same. <laughs>